Stormy, and here is your April 2020 horoscope. And Aquarius, this is an interesting month, I think, mostly in terms of the fact that, first of all, the world looks a little bit different than we thought it was going to. Many people are in isolation. So that changes the way that we interpret the game just a little bit or interprets where we can put this action and this energy. But also because if you take a look at the chart, still this left-hand side of the chart is still the most heavily populated. So you are still in action. You are still in a personal independence peak time where you are in charge of making some things happen. Now I have absolutely no doubt as I was looking over the general horoscope for many of you, new work, new projects, new information probably started coming in for you even in March. But as you're here in April, I think we get to see what to do with that as we have cleaned out and made space for that. One of the reasons I say that too is that we've got this continued travel of Jupiter and Pluto through your 12th house up in that energy of Capricorn, which does tell me you are evolving and not in some deep esoteric way. I mean, yes, of course, but there is an evolution happening for you. Maybe things that you didn't have solutions to, or you felt like a shift was already coming, or you were just right there in that place where you were almost at this place where something different was about to happen, and it started to come in. Now, as we're here in April, I think you get some more depth with that. You get some some answers you get some forward motion even in a time of isolation not to mention that all month long we've got this continuation of travel of both Mars and Saturn one of your ruling energies right here in your first house so besides having this be a personal independence go ahead and push forward time for you Aquarius the other thing we know is that with Mars in your first house you are energetic you are able to be in motion because whatever it looks like for you in actual practice of your daily life and you have to interpret that part Mars is helping you to be in action take risks do something a little bit different and then Saturn is giving you enough grounding to say if we do it different if we allow this shift to come in for us, it's going to be to our benefit. It's grounded. It's going to help us long term. So there's a lot of support happening this month. Now, the other thing I want to point out as we go down through the month is that Venus is going to make this move into the energy of Gemini. But what she does in April is step into this motion that we call out of bounds. That's important because it is, again, another solidifier for you this month, Aquarius, that you're not going to find the solutions in your average normal typical zones you're gonna have to find them out of your own bounds and that is not the same as outside of your comfort zone yes you maybe have to step outside of your comfort zone but it is literally the signal that says hey if what you do is you normally look for happiness you normally look for joy you normally look for solutions right here in this realm we need to get outside of that let's go check this on another in another place let's go to a different grocery store let's let's try a different YouTube video whatever it is because the challenge that can come is that while this 12th house work over here is trying to shed and allow your shift to come this transiting south node says, no, 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 stay with the same behavior, stay with the same actions, stay with the same attitudes. You know what? You don't need new friends. Go back to those old friends. But what may happen that you find out is, is unless you step forward, Aquarius, if you try to stay in what's back there, you can't. There's nothing for you back there. It is just a file in the information drawer that you can draw out later to maybe help somebody else with. But your future is in front of you with new actions you've literally got to nurture some new routines and some new health and wellness in your life so I think that this is a nice setup for that to happen this month and you can use them still in the context of maybe being in some kind of quarantine or shutdown wherever you are so apply these to your current circumstances okay all right so like I said we've got Mars and Saturn right here at the beginning of the month traveling here all month long so you've definitely got action and movement on getting yourself out there getting yourself moving you are an Aquarius social things are important to you so even if it is just online and zoom and social media if that's how you need to step out please take the time to be able to do that if it's listening to a YouTube video if it is just social what is your social life what do your friends mean to you how can you be a part of that look at those questions because being social is important to Aquarians but what you don't want to do is just have noise right have content have conversation have social in your life that is actually feeding you now Mars 
um, being the one of the ruling planets of Aries and also Scorpio, we want to look at what's happening in those areas. So Mars being a ruling planet of Aries who is lighting up this third house. I also know that conversation, communication, decision making, maybe even some things around contracts or I think website and just seeing a lot of words or a lot of writing. So if you're a student, if you're a writer, if you're a journalist, this Mars energy is also very supportive of you here as well. The sun is shining bright here as well. So this is a very concentrated, motivated area. This is also the truth in your work zone. Even if you have been sent home from work because of the quarantines and the shutdowns, what are you doing for work? What are you known for? What are you known as? Where do you want to be on the other side of all of this? What can you be learning, um, training in a skill, breathing in just because you enjoy it that amplifies you on the other side over here? So keep this in mind. You've got Mars here in your first house motivating you, but it's motivating you to make these connections right here, okay? On the third, we're going to see Venus moving out of this energy of Taurus where she's been at home and comfortable and nurturing some things that were at, at home, magnifying that, maybe even bringing work home, right? So there could be some of that happening. But now Venus is going to move into the energy of Gemini, lighting up your fifth house space. So this is an interesting place, I think. This is an interesting So it's a good movement. Venus moves over here into Gemini, into your fifth house space, lighting up a joyful, pleasurable house. The fifth house is joy, self-expression, play, hobbies, things that you're interested in. It is a, a place of romance. This is definitely a place of romance. So even if you are wanting to attract romance into your life and it doesn't come this month, Venus is still a helper here because she says, hey, use these qualities to attract this area of your life, the things that you want in this area of your life to you. So what you could be using that for this month is if you are ready to date, you feel like you'd like to, yes, Venus could usher in a person into your life that you're maybe talking to and yes we may be in shutdown but maybe you meet somebody online or you start having a conversation with somebody online and there's just love there's romance there's joy there's play available there or you start having a conversation with an employer with a new job prospect, um, with a romantic prospect. Maybe you're having conversations with your kids and Venus is attracting things into this area and you're using the Gemini qualities of conversation to bring it into your life. You're curious. This is a wonderful energy to be curious with. Maybe you're investigating what does bring you joy. Oh my goodness. Gemini is an energy of learning. You could just have the kids home from school and you're doing homeschooling. So you're having to learn about that as well and how to get that done but ultimately Venus is saying hey this can be very joyful just use your Gemini-esque qualities to get these things done now this is also when Venus is going to move into that state and that that movement of out of bounds so in your romantic life in the things that bring you joy, in the conversations that you're having. Maybe you're having to look out of your bounds, out of your normal comfort zones in order to get this area activated. In order, in order to get solutions and to get things done. Now, Venus is a ruling energy of not only Libra, but also of Taurus energy. So we know that you will also be activated in those placements. This is the ninth house, which is the house of travel. But it's also the house of travel, which means you don't have to get on a plane. You could publish. You could broadcast. You could be putting something out there. You could be teaching something. That would be a beautiful use of that Gemini communication. And Venus would make you magnetic so you're able to be well-received. That book can still be put out there, right? You could be doing the editing work. Down here from the fourth house, you could also be working from home, doing something different from home. I think more so as well, this speaks to um, having home and family support in something new that you're trying to do or something new that you're taking on. Oh, I'm getting a vision too. I'm not sure who this is for, but this looks like your home zone is changing, like you are beautifying your home zone in some way, but because Venus has exited out of the home zone, maybe you're leaving home or someone is leaving your home and then you're beautifying the space or it's bringing joy in some way, shape or form. So one of the things I think of is, um, 
is maybe a relationship. Maybe something's changed in a relationship and now you've got the place all to yourself or something like that. So whatever that looks like for you, that could definitely be something that's happening as well. Now on the fourth, we're going to have Jupiter and Pluto coming together in one of their three conjunctions that they're going to make this year. This particular one, first of all, this conjunction hasn't happened in 13 years. So think back 13 years ago, what were you putting your back into? And whatever you were really putting your effort into at that time, it was bringing you stability. It was launching you on a course that you were going to sustain for about 13 years. So this is a big deal. But at this particular one that they're doing, they are both out of retrograde. So we know we have permission to push forward. Forward motion happening here. Now, this is from the 12th house. This is why I say I feel like you've had a spiritual awakening or there's been something that has awakened in you. It has already happened. It's not new to you, but now you're ready to take that forward. You're ready to do something with that. Right. When we change spiritually, the circumstances of our life shift with us as well. We start getting rid of people. They move out of our houses. We start getting that job. We felt like, God, why am I not getting the work? Right. We start having different solutions to things. So as these two press forward and can join together, um, what you have the ability to do is take a project forward, start to use that information that maybe is starting to come to you. You're getting new solutions on old situation and you can push forward. This is a beginning for you. And we'll start to see that as the year continues to go on, but this is a beginning for you. And it is the beginning of a 13 year cycle of a spiritual development. It's the beginning of a 13 year cycle of recovery from something, of getting healthy in the areas of things we can't see, of shaking off secrets that have been back there in the um, closet for you, right? They've been, your secrets have been keeping you sick. They've been keeping you held back. This is giving yourself a break, giving yourself some grace, cutting yourself some slack for the ways that you felt like you haven't really done well in life or the ways that you're not at peace. You give yourself some grace and some freedom to shift and to really start to show up here in this next area of your life. And that all starts for you here on the 4th. Now, another thing I want to keep you in mind of is we're going to have Mercury and Neptune, the third, the fourth, and the fifth, really in this conjunction with each other, where I would tell you that things around your money, things around things that you value, but most specifically Aquarius, I really feel like this ties into finances. That is not a solid energy in those couple days to make really big decisions with your finances, right? You have all of the permission in the world to move something forward spiritually. Maybe even you're putting out spiritual material. You're speaking spirituality into your life. I would not go buy the boat on this day, right? We are in quarantine. I wouldn't even buy it online because the energy here is just foggy. But what this energy is good for you is to trust some financial intuition, trust some value intuition, trust that everything that has been happening on your journey, Aquarius, has brought you to where you are now and you can continue to grow. It can get better. It doesn't have to look the same. And you have perfectly been as imperfect as you've needed to be to arrive at this moment. And I think that's really a good use of this particular energy, especially around your self-esteem. Because I really do believe for many of you, if the work did not already start to come into you in March, as we travel in April, and certainly as we're looking at things in July, you're going to start to see this money moving. But it comes from a place of where you really do have to give yourself a little bit of a break, okay? On the 7th, we're going to have a full moon happening in the energy of Libra, so lighting up against this ninth house space. The full moon says that something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So for one, we could be bringing some legal things to culmination. If you've had things with um, the law or documentation or something like that, maybe something with travel. Travel has definitely been halted, right? So we definitely know that the moon is bringing some kind of closure there. But the other thing I think of is just being in Libra energy is balance. Where, where is the, this balance need to be between all the things that you've learned and how you're now actually putting them and expanding them out into the world? You've got the information, but are you sharing it, right? Is this a place too where in the ninth house it's telling you, hey, okay, we can continue to advance, but we need to gain some information. We need to gain some education. We need to gain some training in order for us to actualize everything we've cleaned out and bring it forward and to take us out, right? So that's one thought I certainly have about this ninth house place, but the ninth house also changes your thinking. 
It changes your faith and the way that you believe in yourself and the way that you believe in, in where you've improved to take yourself forward. Uh, Libra is also ruled by this energy of Venus, so we know that there is some conversation happening around it. This is actually quite nice at this moon because I do feel like there's a joy, there's a gentleness, there's a, there's a playfulness about this moon that is bringing something out for you where you are willing and ready to accept the shift and accept your own expansion. Now, the challenge that will happen at this moon, and I'll talk more about it specifically in the full moon video, is that Mars and Uranus here are actually in square to each other. This is a warring energy, right? The square comes under pressure and it says we need to use a little bit of caution here, but we also need to make some new decisions. So one of the things I keep thinking is because Mars and Saturn are saying, be serious, Aquarius, let's take ourselves out there. We're ready to be known for something different. We have made different decisions, but what could be happening here is that in the home zone, you feel like things haven't changed. Or maybe there's a little warring energy that's happening in the home zone that is, um, it's causing your home life to shift. It's causing it to be different than it has ever been. With Uranus here, I can tell you that sometimes the lack of stability or the shaking up of this area of our life that Uranus does is for nothing but the good, but we don't recognize it, right? It's literally like Uranus here has said, hey, we've got to innovate this area because I'm trying to make space for the rest of our cosmic conspiracy to bring you the life you've been asking for. Get out of the way. Take the actions to show up different here. Get out of the way, Aquarius. Understand that we have done good work, right? So I really feel like this is a clearing of this area for you psychologically, but also just in a very material plane because Taurus is an earth sign. So the lack of stability that's been here, now you've got some action that you can take here. It may feel a little tense. Use a little bit of caution, but ultimately you've got a full moon making a clear way for you to um, step out to step into something else, step into an expansion, right? And some of that expansion may be very much so in a technical um, zone, okay? So social media, things like that, because remember, social things are still important. As we get to the ninth, Venus is here in the energy of Gemini, but what she's going to do on the ninth is move into her pre-retrograde shadow phase. So she's going to start to slow down so she can get ready for that um, transition into retrograde, right? So I tell you that because as you're doing things here in the fifth house and you're getting into the joy and you're starting to express yourself and you feel like you're finding your flow and then all of a sudden it feels like things are starting to get real slow. Like, hold on a minute, why isn't this going forward? Why isn't the money showing up? Why am I having to work a little bit harder? It's because Venus is slowing down, so she is still benefic. She's going to bring the benefits, but you may be starting to see them show up more slowly. The other thing that could be happening here as well is I would tell you to pay attention to where your attention is being brought to in this area of your life, your children, your own voice, your self-expression, how you want to show up, what you're speaking, the level of play pleasure you have in your life. Because as Venus does get into that retrograde, those are the things you're going to review. You're going to review the value of this relationship. Was it a good relationship to have in your life? Is it a good relationship to have in your life? Um, what's the depth of this relationship? What's happening with your finances around here, right? These will all be things that you will review during the retrograde from May 13th until June 25th. But pay attention from the 9th on as things start to slow down and your attention gets a little bit focused in in this particular area okay on the 11th we're going to see mercury move out of this energy of pisces which i think mercury is just too excited to get out of the energy of pisces because at least as he comes here into aries he can think straight and he's thinking quickly and he is speaking quickly and he's speaking forcefully right so there's a lot happening around this aries energy that again lights up the third house space for you so now there's thinking there's conversation, there's decision making happening. You wanna make sure you're not being too impulsive, but this is certainly a great time to launch that website. What have you been waiting for? It's a great time to learn something. Publishing, um, publishing in terms of small things that have details. Publish that, that one thing you've been wanting to write about on the blog, right? But really at this moon up here is where you publish the whole really big YouTube site or the whole big book. This is the details of what you are publishing. This is a, an energy where you might have some contract things going on. Maybe a contract is coming to an end or you're willing to join a new contract. And I also think because social things are so important for you, even 
even in quarantine, this could be that you're having a conversation balcony to balcony with your neighbors or with your siblings. Maybe you're gathering and there's some depth happening or conversation happening with the siblings. You know, we've got, yeah, we had the uh, fourth house in a little bit of challenge just here at the moon. Are you and your siblings having to take care of someone in your family or something like that could definitely be going on. On the 19th, the sun is going to move over into the fourth house. So we do know family, the home itself. These things, you're motivated. There's action happening here. You're still working a little bit out of your normal bounds to get solutions happening here. But certainly the fourth house, I think this brings you some family support. Or even if it's not your like biological family, if you've got your tribe and you're tapped into something social, you're feeling supported in allowing your shift to happen so that you can grow forward. So that's going to be really important to pay attention to as well. Some of you may be getting the new house, right? Even, even in quarantine, people are having to move locations. So there could be some new housing developments that are also on the table here as well. On the 22nd, to add to this home vibe, we are going to have a new moon happening here as well. So plant those seeds of intention with your family, with your own psychological foundation, with your internal security. What do you want here? What's the fresh perspective? What's the fresh start you'd like to have here? When this all blows over, do you really want to live someplace else? Would you like to move and live further away? Is that what that moon gave you an insight to? Because this is definitely an energy of you making the home that you would like to live in, and that's internally and externally. On the 25th, Pluto is going to go into retrograde. I'll be making a separate Pluto retrograde um, video so we can really get into the depths and the bowels of all of that. But as Pluto goes into retrograde here in your 12th house, what you want to know is that first of all, it's going to go retrograde at 24 degrees Capricorn. It'll be retrograde all the way until October where it will come out at 22 degrees. What's happening when Pluto goes retrograde is it's working on things that are beneath the surface, right? It's beneath our level of consciousness, so we can't always see it immediately manifested. So as Pluto goes retrograde here in a quiet, hidden house, what he's going to be looking at is the things that need to transform, the things that need to die off so that Aquarius can live in this area in a different way, because it's about your evolution. But this is also, in the 12th house, this is nothing new. Your spiritual life is built to empower you. So I hope you are taking advantage of seeing Aquarius. Have you spiritually grown? Have you made some spiritual progress? Have you gotten honest about things from your past? Have you screwed somebody over in the past? Have you made amends to them? Where are you granting some forgiveness as Pluto is retrograde here so that you can be empowered to be free? Where are you not standing in the old behavior? Instead, you're either cleaning it up or being willing to shed it. So as Pluto retrogrades through that 12th house space, this is to support you in understanding that you have changed and that change and this next level of living is available to you. It's literally like a time to shed the skin, but Pluto takes you back over it. Now, another thing I want to say about this 12th house area, investigations, right? Investigations of medical advancements uh, globally. That'll be a big thing for us. Um, but also investigations, if you are a detective, if you are a researcher of some variety, this Pluto retrograde may help you find information that seemed like it just was not available to you before. And in the next five months, you uncover some things, and then that enables you as Pluto comes out of retrograde to take that, that business forward, okay? Now, as Mercury, as we get ready to close out the month and Mercury steps over here into the energy of... Well, Mercury is drinking and not interested, but Mercury will be at the end of the month until May 11th in the energy of Taurus. As Mercury moves into the energy of Taurus, first of all, our conversation slows down, but it gets deeper. It's dependable. It's practical. It's sturdy. And I also think that this Mercury movement here helps you to gain some information about something you are trying to start over here. It is certainly going to give you some information about ways to invest your money and things like that as well. So keep your eye on that, okay? It has the potential to be a really good month. You have to remember you're at a personal peak, so it's time to make some things happen. And the things you're making happen are setting up new beautiful foundations for you to grow from. You have changed. You have been perfectly imperfect. But if you have done the work, you have allowed your spirit to live, this is the opportunity you have to see that bad boy grow, I think. And you'll also see it in the material planes as well.
All right, Aquarians, I love you. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next month. Let me know how it's playing out for you in the comment section down below. Bye, my friends.